You're welcome back. Now, the Supreme Court has dismissed as unmeritorious the case brought by ace journalist Abdul Malik Kwekubako challenging the removal of Charlotte Osei as Electoral Commission chairperson. Now, the seven member panel presided over by Justice Julius Ansa concluded that the case by the plaintiff raises no issues for constitutional interpretation or enforcement, hence, failing to invoke its jurisdiction. Let's speak to Samson Ladi, who is lawyer of Kweku Bakun, who was challenging the removal of the former EC chairperson. Samson, good afternoon. Uh, what's your take on the court's ruling? <laughs> okay, so if you were in court, I should think that the, the matter that the Supreme Court raised as a preliminary question to answer on the basis of which they said that they were not therefore going to consider the 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 matter in its on its merit, you know, and and my response is that so uh, let's take it this way: the court has not actually said that Kukubako doesn't have a case, except that it has declined jurisdiction because we had filed not only the writ, we had filed statements of case, both parties have answered, the Attorney General have answered our case, and it was left with the judges to determine the case on its merit. When we went to court this morning, the first question that was posed to myself as counsel for Kukubako leading my team was whether or not we have convinced the court enough that there is a constitutional question to interpret whether or not there was real disagreement issues to be resolved. And my response to the court was simple, that we had expended sufficient time in our rating argument in which we had indicated very emphatically and clearly to the court that there were issues determined by the court and that we ought to hear the matter. I was asked the question, are we saying that the question of status and behavior, according to Article 146, should only relate to the performance of the function of an officer whose office, by way of seeking to remove them, is only subject to an Article 146 process? My answer to them was in the affirmative and emphatic. And I asked them that. I pose the question back that if the question of stated misbehavior does not relate to the substance of the performance of your official duty, then there will be trouble. Because look, could you, this example I looked at, the Auditor General every year issues uh, audit report, correct? That, that's, in the that's... audit report, in the audit report, go and pick them. You will see that the judicial service has been found to have breached certain provisions of the of procurement uh, processes. Does that mean that the chief justice must be removed from office? I, I posed that question, and I answered them in the affirmative, no, because, once again, another judge asked about that issue, and I said, because the procurement law provides sanctions. So if you, if you fault on procurement, it is a sanction in the procurement law that will be used against you and not a removal from office. In the same way, if a judge of the Superior Court committed some assault of sorts or some wrong conduct of sorts, for as long as it is not stated in behavior and related to the sanctions of their office, they are not subject to be removed from office because assault is provided for in law what the punishment should be. The punishment is no removal from office. Okay, so I think that what has happened, and, and, and I told the judges that this is going to be opening the floodgates so that every superior court judge or any other officer, like an EC uh, board or EC commissioner, NCC uh, commissioners, uh, trial commissioners, one they are said to have done something wrong. 
It doesn't matter that it does not relate to their official functions and duties. They are to be removed from office for stated misbehavior. That's, that's the question I posed to them. I said, my fear, by the way they were looking at, some of them were looking at the issue, was that they who are the holders of the offices who are only to be removed from office by Article 146 will become an endangered state by the opening of the floodgates in the manner that they sought to have Article 146 construed broadly and not narrowly. I had, I had, I had, I had, they had asked me the question about whether or not uh, the state justice, we had a real question that the petition was not valid and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and whether or not the chief justice was performing administrative function or judicial function or quasi-judicial function when she made the prima facie determination that the matter ought to go to a committee for investigation. My answer to them was very clear. That the same Supreme Court, the same Supreme Court, which uh, during which uh, now Chief Justice sat on the case of the case, they held that the petition must be valid, number one. And number two, the Chief Justice cannot go through these processes without publication of regulation. Now, by that decision, According to Article 11 of our Constitution, that decision has become law in Ghana. If it has become law in Ghana, everybody is bound by it. I think that they saw that as far as that is concerned, we, we have clearly demonstrated the case. That right. no regulations have been promulgated, the, the petition was invalid, and if, if the balance of this case was drawn into, it was very obvious mm. that... The, the, the removal of uh, Charles Jose would have been overturned. Right. I had, I had, I had drawn the attention uh, very quickly. I had drawn the attention to the fact that when I led the case for the removal of the Shrag Board, Loretta Lam, the Chief Justice pronounced that she was performing an administrative function and not a judicial function. In that regard, that is what this Chief Justice was doing. If that is what this chief justice was doing, the law says once you are performing an administrative function, you must ensure that there are regulations. There was there was none, and the process went on. To that right. effect, it was null and void. Right. But, well, they say that we have not properly booked their original jurisdiction mm. because we have not demonstrated to them that there is uh, uh, an issue for constitutional interpretation. We disagree, but that is their decision. Well, right. We think, though, that it is, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is not a good one. Right. Are, are, are there any options remaining for your client? We, 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 we are about to sit, sit, sit again and uh, look at the issues clearly. But you see, this is not about somebody really having a, an issue that they are taking personal. It is a process to further deepening the constitutional process in Ghana. I think the Supreme Court says that you know, they won't take an invitation to clearly delineate what should constitute uh, misbehavior and uh, stated misbehavior and so on. Of course, they, they are mentioning to the Attorney General that the Attorney General in their submission conceded, the Attorney General in their submission conceded one of our points, which was that the committee of the Chief Justice had made a finding and conclusion and recommendation of incompetence against Salah Tosei, when the Chief Justice had not made a prima facie determination of incompetence. So we will look at them again and see what happens. Okay, well, uh, let's, uh, let's keep on top of that and we'll stay in touch as You're this welcome. matter unfolds. Thank you so much. Samson Ladi Anyenini is the lawyer for Abdul Malik Kwekubako, whose case um, today the Supreme Court set aside um, uh, declining jurisdiction.